you ever see a bodybuilder at the gym? That's exciting, right? I always get nervous. I'm like, uh, d d do you live here? <laughs> are, are you lifting the weights or eating them? How'd you get like that? And when I say bodybuilder, I'm not talking about somebody who's muscular. I'm talking about the guys that have gotten so big, people are afraid to tell them it looks weird. What do you think of that? It's great, it's perfectly normal. <laughs> I'm not too muscular. No, no, do you want money? Please don't kill me. <laughs> you ever see those bodybuilding events on ESPN? The guys are up there like, ah! And everyone in the audience is like, yay, yay, clap in the macho, we'll tear up our arms. <laughs> what are those people doing in the audience? At those <laughs> Why are they there? <laughs> it's way better than a movie, huh? <laughs> I like the guy with the big muscles who is flexing who looks exactly like the 10 other guys with the big muscles who are flexing. I wonder what this next guy's gonna do. You think he's gonna flax? Cause that's all they do, they go up there and they flax. You know, there's no talent portion. Never see a bodybuilder playing the harp or anything. Cause those poor guys can't bend their arms like that. He's gonna get his ass kicked for this joke. I'm jealous, you know. I am jealous of bodybuilders, because even if I did work out a lot, I know I would never achieve the title of Mr. Universe, which is the highest accolade you can receive in bodybuilding. Really, Mr. Universe? Shouldn't we have consulted other planets about this? <laughs> we have the audacity to decide who Mr. Universe is, and we pick someone who probably can't name the planets in our solar system. <laughs> Put it this way, the President of the United States is selected by an electoral college based on popular vote. The Secretary General of the United Nations is chosen by a community of countries. Mr. Universe. Five Italian guys from Long Island. <laughs> Let's sell exercise. Of course. Mr. Universe. Schwarzenegger, Arnold, he was uh, Mr. Universe a couple of times. You think he ever viewed being governor as kind of a step down? <laughs> this is so easy. I used to rule the entire solarverse. <laughs> One measly state. I can't believe he's doing an impression of Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Why is it everyone in the world can do an impression of Arnold? <laughs> Yet he can't do an impression of someone that can pronounce the word California. <laughs> Call it, call, this is so hard. We need water. It would be weird to have that on your resume, right? Oh, I see here in 2006, you were Mr. Universe. You know, here you're just gonna be a bouncer. <laughs> if you want, you could be Mr. Bouncer. <laughs> or, or Mr. Bouncerverse. <laughs> Please don't kill me. My favorite herbal supplement I've seen has to be Extends. <laughs> if you're unfamiliar with Extends, that means you're lying. Because <laughs> of course, Extends is an herbal supplement that's supposed to make your manhood larger, but one of the side effects is that it doesn't work at all. <laughs> and we know it doesn't work because they have the best crappy late night commercials ever. In their commercial now, they have NFL coaching legend Jimmy Johnson as their spokesman. I would think if your name was, I don't know, Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> you would know better. They probably weren't even serious when they offered him the spokesman thing. They're like, you know, hey, here's an hysterical idea. What if we asked to be our spokesman, <laughs> Jimmy Johnson? <laughs> him or Dick Butkus, one of those guys. <laughs> That would be... It's amazing the evolution of my view towards the Extends commercial. Because when I first saw it, I was like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. You got to see this. And then after a couple months, I was like, wait a minute, people are actually buying this crap? And then after a year, I was like, well, maybe I should try it. But I would never try it, you know, for innumerable reasons. One of which is I wouldn't want that on my credit card bill. <laughs> That'd be kind of a hard charge to challenge, right? Yeah, uh, yeah American Express, I'd like to challenge a purchase I made. Uh, the name of the product is Extends. Yeah, it's supposed to make your penis larger, but my penis is still really small. <laughs> 
Hello? <laughs> Ma'am, hello? Redial. Yeah, I got disconnected. I'm the guy with the tiny penis. <laughs> yeah, I was cut off. Well, it only looks like I was cut off, really. <laughs> well, what do you mean you dropped me as a member? Hey, speaking of members, I have a tiny one. Have I brought that up yet? Okay, so the joke's over? All right, well, you hang up first. No, you. Look, I should go on the middle of uh, taping a special. Comedy special in DC. Of course, Washington, DC. No, Calgary, DC. All right. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, they're getting annoyed. Okay, I can hold. I'm here, I'm here. Look, you should let me go. Well, I, first of all, I'm not even holding a real phone. All right. Well, I love you too. Of course I miss you. All right, okay, fine. Well, what room are you staying in? Staying in a nice hotel here. You know. All hotels are nice that first night, right? You're like, this is pretty sweet. Then the next day, you're like, this place is a dump. Because <laughs> we get spoiled so quickly in hotels, you know? They can have the nicest amenities, but after a couple days, you're like, hmm, same chocolate on the pillow. <laughs> you think by now they know I like peanut butter. <laughs> I stayed at the Animal Kingdom Lodge in Disney. There were giraffes right outside my window. But by the end of the week, I was like, mm, giraffe again. How about a lion? How about a lion eating a giraffe? That would be magical, Disney. Because we get spoiled. In hotels, there's a sense of entitlement. You ever leave for the day and you come back and they haven't had a chance to clean your room? There's a certain amount of outrage. <laughs> Excuse me. There is a towel on the floor of my bathroom. Can you send a maid or a manservant to pick it up? I demand we burn the peasant village. They spoil us. I always feel guilty when I get out of the cab, the bellhop's like, can I help you with your backpack? Uh, no. But here's five bucks. Sorry you have to dress like Captain Crunch. Do enjoy your crunch berries. It's awkward. I think it's awkward when someone knocks on your hotel door. It's like, you're like, whoa, who even knows I'm in here? What is it, the FBI? Then you have to look through that hotel door peephole. Has anyone on the other side of a peephole not looked like a serial killer? I ordered a cheeseburger, but I think it's the Grim Reaper. I think it's great some hotels provide stationery, you know, because the first thing I like to do when I get to my hotel room is write a letter. <laughs> my dearest Gwendolyn, I arrive by nightfall at the Embassy Suites. It will be a fortnight after my return that this letter shall arrive. Allow me to explain the curious charge in the ledger. It is because I miss thee so much, darling, that I accidentally ordered Sorority Sister 7. <laughs> Some hotels, they kind of push that porn on you. Some poor guy just turns on the TV, they're like, after hours. It's 9 a.m., I'm on my way to a business meeting. After hours, I'm here for my grandma's memorial. After hours. Well, maybe after the memorial, I don't. <laughs> I spend too much time in hotels, I do, yeah. Sometimes at night I find myself thinking of the hundreds and hundreds of interesting people that have stayed in my room, and then I'll just get up and sleep in the tub. Because <laughs> that's nasty. <laughs> you couldn't give away a used mattress, but we'll pay a hundred bucks to sleep on one for a night. Thanks, Priceline. Here, let me slip on this robe someone else wore 12 hours ago. Ah, luxury. 
The amount of denial we embrace when we stay in a hotel is staggering. If you knew a stranger who used your bath towel at home once, you'd be like, burn it and bury it in the backyard. <laughs> but we get in a hotel and we're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sure, the business guy before me only dried his elbow with this towel. <laughs> we change entitlement. We become lazy. You see that around the mini bar, right? You're like, eight bucks for a Coke? <laughs> no, it's either this or walk down the hole of the vending machine. <laughs> it's got time for that. I'm naked. <laughs> I'm always naked in my hotel room. <laughs> hey, it's not my couch. <laughs> <laughs> There is always that realization, maybe I'm not the first person to do that. Because <laughs> you're never the first person to do anything in a hotel room. The Ten Commandments were based on what's already happened in your hotel room. That's why there's a Bible in there for references. You're like, oh, that happened too? Oh, no. I'm sleeping in the tub for sure. We change in hotels. We all kind of turn into kleptos. Right? We're like, oh, what can I take in here? <laughs> Time to make some money back. <laughs> Looks like I don't have to buy shampoo for like a day. <laughs> ka -ching. The only toiletry I don't take is the shower cap. Yeah, Because I'm one of those weird people who likes clean hair. I've never even met anyone who's used a shower cap, probably because they all died 80 years ago. <laughs> if you are the oddball who's gonna use a shower cap, you probably brought your own and a few extra for the rest of the Golden Girls. <laughs> Some hotels treat you like a klepto. You go in the closet, they have those hangers with two parts of the tiny baby head so you don't steal them. Oh, really, hotel? You don't trust me with the real hangers? Well, just for that, I'm gonna steal the whole damn closet. <laughs> Let's see how this room works sans closet. This is how I would carry a closet. <laughs> That's not how you carry a closet. It's the worst closet carrying I've ever seen. There's always that plastic bag for the hotel laundry service. I did that once. It would have been cheaper to have my credit card stolen. $10 to wash a pair of underwear that cost three bucks. Would you clean it with champagne? I do love that wake-up call, right? How'd that start with someone like, oh, yeah, my mommy's not here. <laughs> so I'm gonna need someone to wake me up. <laughs> By the way, no one tucked me in yet. <laughs> Go for a story. You got good night mood down there? <laughs> How about Harry the Dirty Dog? That's a good one. <laughs> I seem to stay in a lot of hotels that have the indoor swimming pool. You can always tell a hotel has an indoor pool because their lobby will smell like a bucket of bleach. Uh, do you guys have an indoor pool or did someone just clean up a murder scene? Because my eyes are bleeding and... In case you all hit the indoor pool, that's always relaxing, right? Until anyone else shows up. Because then you're just in a gigantic tub essentially in your underwear with some stranger lurking there. The polite thing to do is ignore the other person. Because there's nothing you can say at that point that doesn't sound creepy. You can't be like, hey, hop in! What room are you staying in? I didn't shower before I got in here. Kind of count this as a bath. Sometimes they have lounge chairs. Yeah. Who's lounging around an indoor pool? After this chemical bath, what do you say we grab some fluorescent light? Breathe in some poisonous fumes, towel off with a dish rag. <laughs> Think about it. Maybe I'll buy you a drink from the vending machine. You don't have eight bucks and quarters on you, dear. <laughs> Whatever a stranger's doing in the hotel pool is immediately annoying, right? Like that guy that swims laps, aren't you? He's like, settle down, spazzo. You're at the Ramada, not the Olympics. And if you're a guy over the age of 30 by yourself in the hotel pool, you automatically look like a murderer who's just relaxing after he strangled a family. <laughs> yeah, that dad was a tough one to kill. What room are you staying in? 
You ever been in the hotel pool and there's a couple in there making out? It's always charming in romantic comedies when a couple kisses in public, but when you're sharing the same water, it's icky. You're like, ah, don't mind me. This isn't awkward. What room are you staying at? <laughs> of course, no one loves the hotel pool more than kids, you know? Whenever I see a little kid in the hotel pool, I just think, I am swimming in a toilet. <laughs> it's the first time a kid can multitask. I can play and pee! <laughs> this is amazing! <laughs> what room are you staying at? <laughs> I just love the characters you'll see in a hotel pool. Occasionally it'll be like a sweet old lady, someone's great grandma, 90 years old, paddling around. I haven't been in a pool since the 30s. Why do old ladies always swim like this? If my hair gets wet, I'll melt. Good thing I brought my shower cap. I made this suit out of curtains upstairs. What room am I staying in? Speaking of swimming pools, my uh, brother has an above-ground swimming pool. As if you didn't think I was white trash already. <laughs> you don't really swim in an above-ground pool. You just kind of wait around with a beer. <laughs> uh, it's just like a regular pool, but not relaxing or fun. <laughs> I guess I'll head to the deep end slash middle. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> there is no graceful way to get in an above-ground pool. You always look like you're sneaking into a giant cup of tea. <laughs> I hope the Mad Hatter's not in here. <laughs> but I love those above ground pools. It always looks like the owner couldn't make the commitment. You know, I like to swim, but I also want to destroy the value of my house. <laughs> I need something to go in between the abandoned car and the refrigerator without a door. I reference McDonald's a lot, because I go to McDonald's. <laughs> I love the silence that follows that statement. <laughs> like I just admitted to support dog fighting or something. <laughs> How could you? <laughs> McDonald's. It's fun telling people you go to McDonald's. They always give you that look like, oh, uh, I didn't know I was better than you. to go into McDonald's. They sell six billion hamburgers a day. There's only 300 million people in this country. It's like, hmm, I'm not a calculus teacher, but I think everyone's lying. <laughs> you ever been at McDonald's and you see a friend for a second, you're like, oh crap. <laughs> Eventually you're like, hey, 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 what's going on? And they're just like, I'm just here for the 99 cent ATM. What are you doing here, Jim? <laughs> I'm just meeting a hooker. <laughs> Certainly not eating here, that's for sure. Yeah, he, he should be here by now. Because I... <laughs> we all know better, right? We've all read the articles, seen those documentaries. It's the same message. Look, McDonald's is really bad for you. It's very high in fat and calories, and we don't even know where the meat comes from. And we're all like, that's disgusting. I'll have a Big Mac, a large fry, and a two-gallon drum of Diet Coke. Because there's a McDonald's denial. And we all embrace it. No one's going in there innocent. We're walking into a red and yellow building with a giant M over it. Was this a library? <laughs> well, I'll get some fries while I'm here. Because those McDonald's fries are truly amazing, right? Has your mother ever made anything as good as a McDonald's fry? <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> we lie to ourselves when we eat McDonald's fries. We're like, oh, they're so thin, they couldn't be fattening. <laughs> you ever eat too many McDonald's fries? Of course not! of them. There's always that moment when you're eating McDonald's fries where you're like, what happened? Where'd they go? Then you start scrounging for the fry crumbs. You're like, hmm. 
No, oh, that's just a piece of paper from the straw. <laughs> but it was touching the fries, so. <laughs> Sometimes there's a loose fry in the back. You know the bonus fry? It's like Jesus is up in heaven. Give him an extra fry. <laughs> He'll pay it forward. By the way, that's how Jesus sounds. <laughs> or at least I hope. You wouldn't want to meet Jesus and he's like, hey, y'all, how you did? <laughs> you been turn that other cheek out, give me that bonus fry for a reason. <laughs> that bonus fry, it's never a regular size fry. It's always extra long. You're like, how'd I miss you? <laughs> bonus fry, you got your own ketchup packet. <laughs> You always savor the last fry. You're like, I'm gonna turn this into 10 bites. <laughs> I'll meet up with you later. I got the bonus fry. <laughs> Fries are amazing. For what, like seven minutes? And then they turn into something that's likely not biodegradable? <laughs> you ever make the mistake of reheating McDonald's fries in the microwave? <laughs> they become packing peanuts. It doesn't stop you from eating them. You're like, these aren't even good anymore. <laughs> How are yours? Yeah, yours aren't good either. <laughs> Fries can't get cold. Shakes can't get warm. You ever leave a McDonald's shake out for an hour? Reality sets in. <laughs> oh, this isn't even made from milk. <laughs> it's just some kind of chocolate mucus. know all this, yeah. We know those McDonald's commercials aren't realistic, yeah. I just like to see one commercial that showed people five minutes after they ate McDonald's. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now I need a cigarette. <laughs> I deserve a cigarette break today. <laughs> but they get us in there, yeah. Some of those deals they offer are just cruel. Two Big Macs for two bucks? I drive by, I'm like, well, I don't want to lose money on this. <laughs> I'll get 80 of them. <laughs> I know some of you are like, sorry, white trashy guy, I don't eat McDonald's. I have friends that brag about not going to McDonald's. I would never go to McDonald's. Well, McDonald's wouldn't want you because you're a dick. <laughs> I'm tired of people acting like they're better than McDonald's. It's like, you may have never set foot at McDonald's, but you have your own McDonald's. You know, maybe instead of buying a Big Mac, you read Us Weekly. <laughs> hey, that's still McDonald's. It's just served up a little different. Maybe your McDonald's is telling yourself that Starbucks Frappuccino is not a milkshake. <laughs> or maybe you watch Glee. <laughs> it's all McDonald's. McDonald's of the soul. Momentary pleasure followed by incredible guilt eventually leading to cancer. <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> we all have our own. We all have our own McDonald's, you know. It may take me a while to digest my quarter pounder with cheese, but that tramp stamp is forever. <laughs> do, 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 do. Mistake. <laughs> really, it's all McDonald's out there, right? How can we all name three people that have dated Jennifer Aniston? It's McDonald's. And we gobble it up just like those McDonald's fries. It's like, who's she dating now? Um, uh, I know I shouldn't, but it's so salty. Is she pregnant yet? That's not even my business. Scarlett Johansson got a haircut. Why do I give a shit? Because it's McDonald's. And it feels good going down. By the way, if you care who Prince William married, that's Burger King. That's not even our gossip. I just love the societal outrage at McDonald's. McDonald's, there's no nutritional value. There's no vitamins. McDonald's is like, excuse me, we sell burgers and fries. We never said we're a farmer's market. <laughs> Heck 
NASCAR spokesman is a pedophile clown from the 70s. <laughs> what do you want from us, America? We treat McDonald's horribly. We behave like some hormonal teenager dealing with their parents. I hate you, you're gross. When's dinner? <laughs> really going to McDonald's is kind of like attending a family reunion. You're always excited to go, you think it's gonna be awesome. And then when you get there, you're like, oh, I don't know if I should be here. <laughs> and then when you leave, you're like, I think I'm gonna kill myself. But I was raised on McDonald's and I turned out, well, maybe that's not the best reasoning. <laughs> McDonald's has given us so much. We wouldn't know when breakfast ends if there was no McDonald's. <laughs> I'd be eating eggs at 5 p.m. like a moron. <laughs> Thank you, McDonald's. How are we supposed to know St. Patrick's Day is coming up without the shamrock shake? <laughs> Thank you, McDonald's. Without McDonald's, how would I communicate to the world that I give up? Because <laughs> if you're over the age of 10 and you're eating McDonald's, you've given up a little bit. <laughs> eh, it's all over for me. These fries taste good anyway. Hi, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you want. If you want to see more stand-up, I have more stand-up, or if you want to see an original show like Let's Get Cooking or The Mike and Pat Show, that's available on my channel, but also just know that I'll be posting a new video every day during this pandemic or until the world ends. Please hit subscribe and turn on your alert or notification button.